Alexandra, would you do your speech now? Your yeah. resolutions. Thank you. Um, first of all, our workshop name was Emergency Workshop. Why emergency? Do you think that is an emergency right now with the Roma? I say yes. We see that was the Kosovo, Ukraine war. They learned something. Our people have the right for their lives to, to save their family. No. They show us that they, we don't have this right. In this workshop, we find out how to not blame ourselves, that we are not the issue. Yeah, the authorities issue. Every time when we go in different conferences, we find uh, what we do, a mistake, or what we don't do good. No, we do all the things good, but they accept us. They accept our resolutions. They accept our recommendations. No, the Ukrainian refugees, they have education, they have policies, strategy. They were having organization, housing Kosovo, Roma organization. In the end, they don't have the same right like the Ukrainians. They were treated in Republic, uh, Moldova Republic, in Romania. They were treated in Czech Republic very bad. They wanted to send them back. In that, in, this kind of discussion we wanted to have, to find the good things, actions to act, because we are, like, we are tired of people, more the gaji, to tell us what we need to do. No, we are not the issues, and I will let my colleagues to continue uh, with the workshops and what we find out, and what immediately to take actions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexandra. Orhan Tahir, would you do your recommendation with David Donaldson? Thank you. Orhan will, will conclude. Firstly, can I say I agree with my brother on everything he raises, particularly the anti-Gypsyism. What we found very, very quickly in our workshop was that no matter where Roma people, travelers, my people, no matter where they come from, no matter where in the world they live, they experience anti-Gypsyism. This is something which needs to be focused on. It's one of the main things that we all, no matter skin color, language, color of your hair, color of your eyes, it doesn't matter. Because to non-Roma, country folk, Gaji, we are gypsies. And this for us was something we had to reflect on very, very deeply. In reflecting on it, what we found was that the world movement around Roma issues and Roma rights had overlooked this factor for far too long. We fragment ourselves. One organization works here, one works here, one works with Jean de Voyage, Manouche, Caldrash. We need to come together, we need to have a movement that can work worldwide and bring our communities and our peoples together. There's a very, very, very famous expression, divide and conquer. And we believe that the Roma nation has been divided for far too long. We must come together at this stage, we must work together on new ideas. The old ideas don't work anymore. We don't need another Roma organization. We don't need another project. We need a movement. This is something that our workshop looked at. This is something we've been left reflecting on. We need a new idea. We need to come with youth, with passion. We need to look at the skills that our peoples have and use these properly. No longer can we be allowed to be led by people that are not part of our community. These people should sit and they should listen. They cannot lead this movement. And that's why the movement has failed so many times. Brother Vicente shared that the movement is very, very old. But in many ways, we've went backwards. So this is where we got to, and my brother Orhan will continue. Thank you very much, David Donaldson. Hello, everybody. For me personally, this was uh, 
maybe the most useful and meaningful congress that I have attended because in our workshop we had extremely interesting participants and discussions. People from uh, United States, from United Kingdom, from Eastern Europe, from Spain, from different parts of Europe, and also from India, participated in our workshop during the conference. And it was dedicated to the emergency situation in which we, Roma, are at the moment. When you are in an emergency situation, you cannot follow the normal procedures. You cannot continue in the same way because obviously you ended up into a dead end. And now the question, the big question, and this I think all of the participants agreed on, the big question is how we continue ahead, how we go ahead collectively. Because individually, each of us can follow his own personal path of development. But as far as we feel part of a community, of a nation, or however you want to call it, as long as we feel part of this Romani nation, we need to think together about our collective advancement and progress as people, despite of the fact that we are spread all over the world. And what are the signs of this emergency? Why we are talking about emergency situation? It is because we have a war in Europe, in Ukraine, which actually might become a regional war, might involve other countries, especially the Central European countries, the neighboring countries, which are with very, very high percentage of Roma population. And you know which are these countries, like Slovakia, Hungary, Moldova, Romania, and this could be a disaster for Roma if this scenario happens. And because we saw that Ukrainian Roma, we saw how Ukrainian Roma were treated, how Roma refugees from Ukraine were treated. We know that Roma refugees from the other European countries will not be treated better, but on contrary. And that's why we need to start thinking more seriously on what, on the political developments in, in Europe, on the political situation in Europe, and not only in Europe, of course. And one of the main questions in front of us is actually, it was raised by many participants, do we need more autonomy or more dependency. But what choice? What, is, what should be our choice? What I mean by autonomy and uh, dependency, in Western Europe, our brothers and sisters from Western Europe who preserved for longer time their nomadic or traveler way of life, they are more self-sustained, um, not depending so much on, on the state, on the donors, uh, while the Eastern European Roma, who come from post-communist countries, have a little bit different mentality. So there is difference between the Western, the Roma in the Western world, in, in UK, Spain, United States, and the Roma in the, from the post-communist countries. Um, and we have two different approaches, and this was clear also during the World Roma Congresses in the past. Whether Roma should become more integrated, which also means more assimilated into the hostile societies, 
host, uh, in the local societies, dominant societies, all Roma should pursue their own way ahead and emancipate themselves. So emancipation or integration. If I can summarize it, autonomy, Roma autonomy or Roma dependence. Roma emancipation or Roma integration? This is, these are uh, the big questions in front of us. And also, we are a very large community. We are millions of people around the world. How is possible that millions of people in 2023 say that they are vulnerable, that they are poor, that they cannot organize themselves, that they can solve their own problems. We are not 100,000 people. We are not 200,000 people. We are millions. We have thousands of lawyers, doctors, professors, teachers, all kinds of specialists, IT specialists. And it's time to see, to turn to these people and to see how can their potential, their skills, their qualities, we have Roma businessmen, we have very rich people among ourselves, and these people should be involved, not just NGO activists, because if we have to be honest, the NGO movement, the human rights movement, it fulfilled many of its objectives. That's true. Many cases were won uh, in front of the courts, in courts. Many cases of human rights violations were exposed. Many uh, things have been done in the field of education or healthcare. But in general, in general, we see that anti-Gypsyism is rising and is becoming more dangerous and more dangerous for us, despite of the successes uh, declared, the, the declared uh, uh, successes. You know, some, some organizations, uh, some international organizations, they, they say that they achieved many things about Roma. But in fact, intolerance towards Roma is growing everywhere. And you know this very well. The sociological surveys in, in the United Kingdom, in Italy, in, in Germany, in France, this is Western Europe, these are the democracies, not Eastern Europe but the democratic countries show that Roma people are the most intolerant people, the most hated people, more hated than the uh, black people, than the Jews, than the Muslims, they, the, than the LGBT people. And we need to prioritize this. We need to speak about this. And we need to answer the question, why? Why we are more hated than the others? How we pose a threat to these societies. We, know, we don't make terrorist act, acts. We don't claim territory. We don't do anything harmful. We are not dangerous. We don't buy weapons. But at the same time, we are the most hated people in Western Europe and in Eastern Europe. How is this possible? And the other question, the other very important question is, how, what shape this Roma movement, what shape it will, it will have in the future? Can the NGOs, can the foundations be uh, the instruments for, for advancement of the Roma movement? Or maybe political parties, or maybe Roma need European political party, or maybe more political parties, or maybe business, uh, more businesses, more companies. What is necessary? And also, what will be the role of the state factors and non-state factors. Here, India was mentioned. We have here uh, people, representatives of, from India. Uh, what will be the role of these state factors of European Union, of European Commission, of, uh, of uh, um, Indian government, of the other participants, also non-state factors, international uh, organizations, how, uh, and also we need to, to see who are, which are our, uh, let's say, allies, possible allies or friends in this situation. We know we don't have many friends. And who are our enemies? It's easy to say who are the enemies. It's very difficult to say who are the friends. And despite of everything, 
there is one thing that was mentioned by, by different participants at the workshop. And uh, it is that until Roma repeat, continue to repeat, we are very poor, we are very discriminated, continue to complain, they will be even more discriminated, they will be even more hated, they will be even more oppressed because we put ourselves in the position of the oppressed, in the position of the victim. And it's very important for the future of Roma to overcome this uh, victimization, this victim uh, syndrome or victim mentality, because we are millions of people. Only in Europe we are 12 million. We are more than the population of many European countries. And at the same time, we, we say we are, uh, we are powerless, we are weak, we are disorganized, we are poor. How is this possible? And we live in the most, in the richest continent on the world. Europe is the richest, most advanced continent in the world in terms of uh, wealth, economics, finance, international trade, human rights, and so on. So this is a big contradiction which we have in Europe. So also the question of, uh, the question of uh, immigration of Roma, a lot of Eastern European Roma are already in Western Europe. They moved to Western Europe. Most of the participants here from Romania, former Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, uh, Slovakia, are actually immigrants in Western Europe. They don't live anymore in these countries. I'm myself from Bulgaria, but I live in Germany. My colleague uh, Alexandra is from Romania, but she lives in the United Kingdom. So there is a big displacement, and also the case of Yugoslav, Roma, Kosovo, Roma, big displacement, big demographic shift due to the intolerance, hatred, poor conditions, economic problems. More and more Roma are moving from east to the west. And if we think in a historical perspective, over the centuries, our movement has always been from east to the west. We have never moved from west to the east. Our movement was, was to the west. And our brothers and sisters, some of them who left Europe, they, they went to North America and South America. This was the normal the course of development, the normal course of movement of Roma. And we have in Western Europe a lot of Roma who never emigrate anywhere. They stay there. Even the travelers, even the um, um, Irish, Scottish travelers, they travel only within the British Islands. They don't go anywhere else. Spanish Roma don't emigrate anywhere. French Roma don't emigrate anywhere. The only Roma who emigrate are Eastern European Roma. And this is very important. We need to start thinking in terms of politics, in terms of uh, demography, in terms of geography, we don't think in terms of these things. We, we, until now, we have been thinking only in terms of human rights, discrimination, health care, and such things. But look where we are now in 2023. We are in a dead end. We, are, we don't see exit. We are disintegrated, divided, disempowered, there were so many organizations and people coming to us and talking, we will help you, we will empower Roma. And after 30 years, we are more disempowered, more divided than we were 30 years ago. And we don't, look, uh, don't ask any responsibility from these people, but the, we let them, we allow them to continue to lecture us, to give lessons and to advise us, to give us advice and you know, we don't need any more the advice of these people. These are failed organizations, failed policies, failed uh, uh, um, solutions that doesn't work for us. So our workshop is raising the question, how we continue, how we, what we do in the emergency population? We run away, we stay, and yesterday was the day of Roma resistance. Staying means resisting. 
Resistance means you stay and you fight. And those Roma and Sinti who resisted at the uh, Auschwitz concentration camp, they decided to fight because they, they, they know that that is coming for them. And we need to resist. We cannot give up. We cannot, uh, we need to, to resist. This is very important. The concept of resistance, not only on 16th of May, but every day. And not just to survive, but to prosper, to advance, to progress. We are extremely gifted people. This was repeated by many participants. We are extremely, we have so many advantages over the non-Roma people. We, it's time to understand, to realize this. We survived in Europe in conditions in which the other nations would not survive. They had their states, they, have the, they had their churches, their religions, their holy books, their uh, uh, many things. And they were concentrated on certain territories. We were dispersed everywhere. But we did survive. And this is a miracle. This is a miracle. And that's why we need to have self-confidence. We need to believe in ourselves. We need to stop talking about ourselves and thinking about ourselves as of some kind of endangered species. Extinct, you know, uh, uh, endangered, like, uh, you know, we are not like uh, Native Americans uh, in the uh, in, uh, United States because demographically our number is growing. We are in very different position. And something very important, we should stop thinking of ourselves as guests in Europe. We are not guests in Europe, dear people. We are more than 1,000 years on this continent. And I will tell you that Hungarians, if you look at the history, they come to Europe approximately the same time when we, we came. Nobody today tells Hungarians you need to go back to Asia. Nobody today tells Hungarians, your ancestors were nomads, what, what are you doing here? Nobody. They are accepted as Europeans. So why is this difference in the attitude? We came at the same time, but we are treated differently. We are not guests in Europe, and we should not allow anybody, anybody, to talk to us like this, and to treat us like guests, like foreigners, like refugees. We are not refugees. And we should not allow the politicians, the far right, or anybody, doesn't matter, to talk to us in this way. And I want to wish all of you, really, and to tell you, we need to turn other page. We need to accept our failures. We need to understand that we are in a catastrophic situation. In, we are really in an emergency situation, and we should not repeat the mistakes of Yugoslav Roma, Ukrainian Roma. In 2023, we need to show that we are smarter, and we are aware of the risks in front of us, because we need to think about, about the future of our children. Thank you very much. Orhan Tahir, thank you. We are not guests anymore. The world is ours, Europe is ours. Thank you for this, Orhan Tahir. Thank you.